Welcome to In the Envelope, an awards podcast. I am your host, Jack Smart, awards editor at Backstage. I'm here to give you a front row seat to the Emmys, Oscars, SAG, and Tony's races. Who is in the running? What makes an award-worthy performance? And what are the secrets to giving one? intimate, inspirational conversations with some of today's most talented stars provide you, dear listener, the kind of craft and career advice that could win you a statue of your own, and maybe, just maybe, a tantalizing glimpse in the envelope. If a person doesn't have failures, then they haven't really taken big enough risks. Right, right. And it's the failures that you learn from mostly and Mm -hmm. grow from. Definitely. And your success is not so much. Hi. Hey, guess what? Hi. Come sit. What is happening? Welcome back, Casey May. <laughs> You're a podcast regular. <laughs> if by regular you mean, um, this is my second time on the is podcast. It only the second? Yeah. Oh. Well. You're honorary. You're you're an expert. Thank you, you so much. You were in that discussion episode, much. which makes me think that you're like, you've done this many times. That was a great episode. <laughs> <laughs> we I listened to it a couple times. To our own horn a little. Yeah, yeah. I liked I've it. Gathered you here, I've gathered you here today to tell you something. <laughs> oh, God, I'm scared. <laughs> well, we just booked somebody really excited for the podcast, and I wanted, I wanted you to be my guest co-banterer for the podcast. Oh, my God, who? <laughs> I got, you have to guess. Is it Tony (laughs) Shalhoub? Yes. Oh, my God. (laughs) I wasn't sure, but I was going to get you to guess. You just did. I mean, to be fair, (laughs) most of my answers to anything that anyone asks me is just Tony Shalhoub. (laughs) He Uh, just won an Emmy. Reigning Emmy Uh, winner, Tony Shalhoub. (laughs) Not long after winning a Tony, uh, Tony won a Tony. Um, it was. It's been a minute. He had. A, he won a Tony, then he didn't win an Emmy, and <laughs> oh, then right. and then he right. won an Emmy. Right for Marvelous Mrs. Uh, he's yes. a great. Do you interview. want to give us a, for those who don't exactly? So for those who don't know your relationship with him, but also like <laughs> my relationship with him, I <laughs> love. I love my and relationship. Also like a little bit about Maisel. Um. Oh God. Okay. You know my relationship to Tony Shalhoub. Let's just start there. Um, <laughs> starts and ends with the fact that I have a T-shirt that says I simply love Tony Shalhoub. <laughs> I did not wear that to interview Tony Shalhoub. However, we no, had we had a great lunch. We ate steak tartare. I mean, it's just really fascinating. The more you're in this business, you really do just learn so much with every passing project. Yeah. And that's what I learned He's from him more than anything. Yeah. Um. But Maisel is. I mean, everyone, it's one of the biggest shows I know on is. TV now, we which is so... We just never had a Maisel guest on this podcast, which is why I'm excited that we finally booked Oh, my, wait, am Tony. I going to be the banter for the Tony Shalhoub episode? Yeah, that's what this <gasps> is. Oh, my God! <laughs> hey, what do you oh, think my God, is? I'm so sorry. You're going to have to edit so <laughs> much of this out, including literally what I'm saying right now. Um, <laughs> which we, we can do. Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, oh, it's so great. I feel like it... It's it, so great. It's so great. It's from Amy Sherman Palladino and Dan Palladino, who yes. most well-known for, prior to this point, the Gilmore Girls. True. But now, I think, yeah. honestly, this might be even more of a, a, so. a hit as it's far as Zeitgeist. Boatload guys. of Emmys. Boatload of Emmys. I mean, everyone watches this show. Yeah. The exactly. costuming, like, you can it's tell that they so spend... so beautiful. The production design in the show is stunning. Oh, my God. This show costs more than, like, the U.S. deficit. <laughs> sure. Straight I'm up. Sure. It's so expensive, but it's yeah. so great. And Tony Shalhoub is wonderful on it. Leading lady, Rachel Brosnahan. Yes. Fant- another theater actress who just had yep. her career kind of flipped upside down in this star-making role. She's... Totally. Just remarkable. The There's whole such cast. An ensemble too. Marin, what's Marin Hinkle? Marin Hinkle. Marin Hinkle, who's Alex amazing. Borstein. Alex Borstein. Jane Lynch, who I love. Jane Lynch keeps coming She's back. So great. Yeah. Oh, it's so it's, it's so great. Cast. It's such a New York show. It's a really New York show, and so many New York theater actors make cameos. Yeah, and we have we had some love. Brandon Uranowitz, some <laughs> Katrina <laughs> Lang. I can't yeah. be on yes. your podcast without saying Katrina Lang's name. That's Katrina right. Lang. Katrina Lang. Katrina Lang. That's right. Um, well, she starred in a Broadway show with Tony with Shalhoub. Tony Shalhoub. It all comes back to Tony <laughs> Shalhoub. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. It's, uh, it's really going to be. Get. I'm so excited for this to like 
lead into what I'm sure will be such a great interview. Yeah. He's yeah. a great interview. I'm oh, excited. The best mustache of all time. He's got great facial hair. Yeah. Oh. He wears a romper really well. The Emmy and Golden Globe winning Amazon original series, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, returns. Hailed as one of the best shows on the small screen of any genre by Deadline, this season takes Midge and Susie on a comedy tour filled with original music, sweeping dance numbers, award-winning costumes, and some of the most lush production design on TV. Watch the new season of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, December 6th, only on Amazon Prime Video. Tony Shalhoub is a master craftsman of the stage and screen, winning two SAG Awards, a Golden Globe, a Tony, and four Primetime Emmy Awards. Born in Michigan and choosing the life of an actor from an early age, Tony studied at the Yale School of Drama before working at American Repertory Theater and later on and off Broadway. Best known for the comedies Wings and Monk, Tony recently won another Emmy for playing Abe Weissman in Amazon's Amy Sherman Palladino comedy, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Here it is, our marvelous interview with Tony Shalhoub. Congratulations on your Emmy Award. Thank you. <laughs> How does it feel? It feels amazing. And, um, you know, in, in a way, it, it's different now than when I, uh, when I did Monk because in, in that, at that time, there were always sort of five actors in a category, oh, five shows mm-hmm. in a category. And now it's more, now there's six, seven, yeah. and you're, all of a sudden your odds start to get <laughs> yeah. diminished. And, and, but I guess it's because there's so much more product now. There's, there's, yeah, golden the age. The choice is so vast, or so vast and totally. far reaching. And um, there's just more great material, more great, um, you know, all this great work being done. And that's all good, really. But, totally. But yeah, it, it's, it's nice and, uh, it was a little bit crazy being the first category. Of the night? Of the night. Yeah. Hmm. It's a little bit. Crazy jarring. or like a relief after it's over? It, you, both. It's, yeah. it's a little <laughs> sort of unsettling and then you're glad it's over. Uh, sure, sure, sure. Um, thank you so much for joining us on In the Envelope, an awards podcast. Thank backstage. you for having me. We have me. your cover story here, um, which is delightful. And we are at backstage, of course, as you know. You said that you had used it before for audition calls, maybe? I actually, my, my experience with Backstage was that mm. when I was um, living in California, and I think it was in the 90s, I, I was on a cover mm-hmm. for something. Or maybe it wasn't the cover. Maybe it was just an article. But um, I think that's when Backstage was a black and white. And, yeah. and not a color. More of a newspaper. Yeah. More of a paper. Sure. Yeah, more like a tabloid oh, size. Yeah. And, um, but I did, I, I used to, you know, check in with it all the time because it had, mm-hmm. um, you know, I like to you know, read about all the work I wasn't getting. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's helpful, right? Yeah, it really is. It's a big ego boost. You can stay informed about the roles you're not getting. As well as the roles. All the projects. You know, what, what, what am I? What a job <laughs> liver? I, you know. <laughs> Why is my agent sending me up for this or that? Or Yeah, we've we've changed. We have this beautiful color fo- these color photos now. Yeah. You look great. It's really classy. This shirt? It's very classy. That shirt, yeah. It's uh <laughs> not a it's not my shirt, but I really oh. did like it. <laughs> So wait, was that backstage, co- whether it was a cover back in the 90s, was that like your first bout of press? Was this like your first kind of name recognition? I, I think it was one of the early ones, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. Um, remind me of your trajectory. You went to ART, was that right out of school? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And you were there for how many years? I was there for four seasons. Wow. Oh, four seasons. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So four years. Uh, then I moved to New York mm-hmm. and lived in New York for... Six years, did a lot more, you know, mostly theater. Okay. Uh, mm. During that time, but I started to dip my toe into, uh, you know, oh, we just, you know, commercial auditions, and gotcha. we did. I did day player stuff on soap operas and uh, some episodic. I got my first episodic thing in New York. That mm-hmm. was uh, some uh, uh, the Equalizer, which shot here uh-huh. in the eighties. Yeah. 
But mostly I was plugging into, you know, theater. Yes. Broadway, off-Broadway. Uh, I would go out, you know, back into regional theaters often. Gotcha. Um, did Shakespeare in the Park. Mm-hmm. Uh, off, off, off-Broadway. Yes. Bring, you know, um, so a little, a little bit of everything. Just we were just trying to right make ends meet and and uh, build something yeah. slowly. Some connections. Some. It's yeah. interesting thinking about the idea of going to school for. So Yale was three years, mm-hmm. and then four seasons at ART. Mm-hmm. It's safe to say that's that means seven years of of more like consistent work, and then when you move to New York, it's a little bit more of a crapshoot, a little bit more of a like. Very much so. Yeah. Um, because when, at ART, you know, we had a company. Yeah, which is so, so cool. It was it was rare. And and well, not just a company of actors. I mean, you know, there were people that uh, mm. would come in and, and go out and then return. and But there were there was a core of us that stayed there. Mm. And, um, I mean, Cherry Jones was, mm, uh, cool. you know, we started there at the same time. And... Uh, so we had not only did we have a company of people, but we all, we also were one of the few theaters remaining in the country at that time that were doing true repertory, mm-hmm. you know, where we were performing uh, more than one play within the same you know week schedule. Yeah, it, all the sets were repertory sets. You know, we all were you know one play you were doing a large role, the other play mm-hmm. you were more supporting. Uh, cool. Sometimes we were doing three in rotation. It was fantastic and. Yeah. Uh, Rehearsing one play in the afternoon, performing an, another one at night, and huh. it, it was uh, challenging and thrilling. Yeah. And, uh, and there also was uh, some touring that we did, um, oh, and oh. Um, because our season was a base, basically we had a ten month season, so um, wow, that was really you know steady work for ten months. And then um, when we were down, people would well, sometimes we would tour. We did a hmm. New England tour. We did a European tour one year. Oh, wow. Uh, different theater festivals in Europe. And uh, so it was um, – we, we, we were busy. And, yeah. and, and a lot of us were – you know, we just we were single and we were um, – we didn't have anything. We didn't own anything. Gosh. I certainly didn't own anything. <laughs> so, you know, we were super mobile and uh, – just throw some stuff in a bag and yeah. go. Gypsies. Yeah, and that was uh, it's great. Totally. A great time. And it's boot camp. It really is. Absolutely. And, it, and a, you know, a, a group of people that you work with and live with and, ah. you know, travel with and you go through all, li- you know, you know, children being born and people getting married and people getting divorced and and you know it was it was just very intense and uh, yeah and, and sort of f- uh, creatively fertile time. Yeah, which I guess for a theater actor is uh, the closest you can get in the arts to like a, the equivalent of an office job, the equivalent of a nine to five of like. Those are your coworkers, and they're kind of your family. They are your family, whether you like it or not. And that's right. And yeah. uh, and and then, but also there with you know, given the fact that the, that we were this tight knit, uh, tightly knit group, mm-hmm. we also had uh, there was always um, you know new blood coming in from from New York or from uh, you know we had uh, directors from. Oh. England, from London, from from Eastern Europe, from hmm. uh, other places. We had uh, actors coming up from New York to work or from another theater like, you know, Trinity in Providence. Right. Mm-hmm. And we had uh, – so there was it was also kind of like there was an infusion of new, interesting, you know, fresh blood coming in. and And then, you know, occasionally one of us would – you know, go away for a while, do a different job, mm-hmm. uh, uh, and, then, and then sort of come come back around, you know, back into the fold, and um, yeah. So the, so so it it had a it retained a kind of freshness. Mm-hmm. But then the so the transition then to New York. I mean, did you wanna you wanted to do theater in New York? Was New York kind of always the destination? Well. Um, you know, it wasn't that like I had a specific plan in mind. I mean, you know, a long range plan. I kind of, yeah. I went, I worked kind of off impulse a lot. Um, I, I, over the four seasons I was uh, 
at the American Repertory Theater, I, you know, the, uh, the longer I stayed, the you know, I started to get better, you know, bigger roles, mm-hmm. and and I, uh, that was fast. And I loved living in Cambridge. It was a ter- terrific place sure. to be at that time, and still is. And um, but I also felt that um, along with this steady work and this stability, slow pervading kind of complacency would was starting to set sure. in and, and and in a way I mean some for some people I think that's good and comfortable and um, but for me I started to feel like I want to be hungry again I want to mm-hmm. I want to be in that uh, as I'm a masochist maybe but I want to <laughs> go back into that uh, that area of of uh, uncertainty Uncert- yeah totally yeah. And that area of you know back into the void, which is for an actor, is that uh, that period of time between jobs. Yeah, <laughs> we say between jobs because we, you know, we have to delude ourselves yeah, to being else? optimistic. But yeah. really, it's every you know, as many people say, you know, the, my last job was you know was really my last job. Right. Um, right. So so I but I wanted to I wanted to kind of venture out and see what else was out there for me. And I felt too, and I was, um, you know, assured by uh, Robert Bristine, who was our, our artistic director of the, of the ART. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, he said, you can do this, you can go off, you can, you know, explore gotcha. New York, but, you know, always feel that you'll have a place here, you know, sure. founding member and, and this is our, you know, this is our company. You, just because you go away doesn't mean that you're not a part of our company. Which is nice, yeah. Which was great because it felt like uh, I could, you know, I could go take some risks, but I had a safety net too. Yeah, if things didn't pan out, and I did, I uh, I came to New York and I did work, but there were t- I did go back to ART too and work mm-hmm. sometimes. Yeah, um, uh, there was always that lifeline, which is good because the void, as you say, I mean, is the void. The void is a you know it's a mixed <laughs> blessing, right. It's terrifying sometimes, right? Sure. Yeah. Oh, it's it's daunting. Yeah. And, but on the other hand, it's also there's also there it there it's healthy in a way mm. to confront that, mm-hmm. and it uh, forces you to reevaluate uh, where you are and mm. uh, reassess uh, and realign your your goals and your ambition mm-hmm. and ambitions, and. Um, and, and and so I think that's for me anyway. There's a security and and uh, and complacency sometimes go hand in hand. Yeah, it's it's a dilemma of the actor because I mean, to talk to same thing happens with a television series, for example. You know, well, well, everyone long running. everyone dreams of you know having a, especially as we get older and then we you know get married and we have children and we need yeah. s- some security mm. and stability. You know, being in a series, great. You're in one place. You don't have to travel. Do mm-hmm. I don't have to go off to God knows where to do a film or whatever? Yeah. But then again, you know, you're that's good. And then on the other hand, well, I'm gonna, you know, that, that if that show runs six, eight, ten years, yeah. I'm doing the same role. Everything there's duality to all. Sure, of it. it is uh, tricky to keep making that challenging. Yeah, and uh, fulfilling. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 then you again you're and at that point where you realign your um, your priorities. You know, how do I keep this you know balancing act mm. going? Uh, yes, I want to. I don't want to be a starving artist, but right. I also want to have ch- certain creative challenges and grow as uh, and work with good people and mm. uh, you know up my game and work yeah. with better people and mm-hmm. um so yeah. it's sort it's, of like the void is uh there's no scenario where an actor never experiences the void so there's first of all it's a guarantee well there's there's about a handful of actors out there oh. i guess that you could say well <laughs> I guess they're, they're set they're just yeah. you know they have jobs lined up three four years in, sure. in advance sure. but you know you can count those people on like two hands and that's it yeah yeah and even and crazily as crazy as it sounds uh, in my experience, you know, having intersected with some of those people, yeah. <laughs> they, uh. you know, if they have had that feeling too. I mean, from the outside, we think, well, that person's basically 
a rock star, so they're set. They're secure. Yeah. But but inside, they're feeling, what if this is, you know, what if the what if it stops? What if what if this really is sure. it? And it's that's part of being an actor. Yeah, it's part of the uh, part of the 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 pathology. Yeah. Well, and it's it's true too that the void helps with like adversity is helpful, and if you go through life just get booking everything and always working and never uh you know if you if there were some imaginary guarantee of working all the time as an actor that talk about complacency like there you're not going to have any have any suffering to draw from or any well that's right and i think it's not just for actors i think any sure. or any artistic or creative pursuit mm. um uh, that uh, that that is true um you know there's yeah. uh, you you, you sometimes you know read about very well known painters or musicians or mm. composers or who you know are tortured or have these feelings of not being um good enough or not being worthy of their success or their notoriety mm. and uh hmm. I keep running into that when i you know I'm, if I'm researching someone or Ah. I, I, you see this over and over again. It's a, it's a pattern. Success or failure, we're all just trading pro- our problems for other problems. Exactly. Or upgrading to to, to newer, and, bigger. Yeah. And and the, and the and the reality is that, in one sense, you know, failure, run, coming up against mm-hmm. failure, is is it's not only not only is it is it a good thing, mm-hmm. it, it's an essential thing. Mm-hmm. If if a person hasn't if a person doesn't have failures, yeah. then they haven't really kind of taken big enough risks. <laughs> and, right, right. And it's the failures that you kind of learn from mostly and mm. grow from. Definitely. And your successes, not so much. Sure. Your successes keep you semi-sane, you know, and possibly mm. allow you to eat for another year. That. Yeah, but, totally. but they're not necessarily the, the fuel that uh, sustained you over the long term. Right, right. You, we definitely learn more from the negative, the negative stuff than the positive. You can't dig that deep if you're in the same kind of stuck routine, if you're Absolutely. setting yourself up for complacency. In Absolutely. That way. Yeah. Sometimes you've got to pull the – I've been thinking about it as the rug. Sometimes you've got to pull the rug out from under yourself yeah, <laughs> just to Absolutely. see what lands where. You know? it's, it's, I think it's healthy. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because when I was coming up, you know, there was uh, th- the life of an actor, you know, it was very different from other kinds of jobs. Mm. Other, you know, there was this path, which was oh. nutty and kind of st- stupid, sure. <laughs> foolish, yeah. our path. And then there was these other, you know, these other people like, you know, uh, well, you know, my, my parents, for example, or my yeah. or older siblings or uncles or aunts or whatever, who had, you know, Got into a profession, stayed in that, you know, it's a clear, a, got a job or yeah. got a career and stayed in there. And that was, that was the goal. <laughs> and that was fantastic. But, mm. but, you know, in my life was this, our lives were this other thing. But now it's equalized in a way. Because young people, uh, they don't just go to, and, you know, graduate, you know, fortune, if they're fortunate enough, get a job and yeah. stick with it. They, they change. They move. They, it doesn't matter what profession you're in. And things aren't as secure as they were. Totally. There's there's layoffs and there's turnovers mm-hmm. and there's uh, pop-ups and there's sure. what's that other there's thing called? There's more industries, too. Yeah. Well, yeah. Just like the idea that everything's sort of shared. And yeah. Everything, everything is sort of and everything horizontal. is sort of temporary. Totally. And yeah. I mean, I have a, a, a daughter um, who's uh, moved to New York mm-hmm. about almost 10 years ago after school. And in that time period, she's had many, many different jobs, all great jobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this generation, they're just, they're they're not afraid, I think, to just make it, to change it up. Yeah. And just to go to their employer and say, thank you, this has been a great, I've got to, it's been a great experience, i got to move on. (laughs) I mean, super normal, yeah. There was not that long ago when people just, that just was not, it was unheard of. Totally. I mean, you would if you made a job sh- change. Yeah, it was one time, and it was right. enormous Huge. upheaval. Yeah, and you know, storm. Now it's a sort. 
Yeah. Just move on, move and move. It's almost like the actor's lifestyle has infiltrated the rest of the it, 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 market. There's, there's been a kind of a, yeah, a kind of, it's, it's become a sort of, it's equalized, I guess. Actors were there first. <laughs> Actors were doing it first. Or artists Actors and general. artists in general. Totally. Yeah. Totally. It is definitely artists in general, but I keep thinking that and in, in these interviews, it, it's it's very apparent to me that with acting in particular, it's as inconsistent as most jobs in the arts. But because it's so personal, the rejections feel so personal. And like even those lucky few Absolutely. who are working all the time, like they still have to think about their image and they have to think about if people like me, do they like me or do they like the persona of me? And there's the fame factor, which I'm sure you've had to deal with. And Well, for me, yeah, that's not such a big thing. I mean, there are mm. so many people that are really, really, you know, the, at such a level that they can't even go out in public hardly. Right. Um, but yeah, there, there's that. There's, yeah. th- it's a, it becomes a kind of, you know, be careful what you wish for sort of situation. Right. Uh, yeah. You, you achieve a certain level and then all of a sudden your life is no longer, it's just different. Everything is different. Yeah. And you're more under a microscope. You know, you say something or you do something or you're at a place and someone, and it's, and then especially now when there is no privacy no. and there's cameras everywhere. Sure. I mean, you can, it's so, there's just like, this is a minefield out there. Yeah. Uh, so social you, media. And, totally. Uh, I think anonymity is, yeah, it's harder to come by these days. Yeah. And I, I'm, it's one of the reasons why I'm I'm not on social media. Uh-huh. I it's just something that I feel is not I'm, I, doesn't suit my my life and my uh, sure. my taste. It doesn't necessarily. I don't think. Uh, I don't think. Uh, I think people know enough about me that there's you know any more would just be unnecessary overkill. and redundant. Yeah, it would be <laughs> sure. serious overkill. Yeah. Well, in that ART era, and it kind of, I'd love to go back and hear about what initially started all of this, but was it always theater? Was the passion? Yeah. And then film? Well, because I went to, um, uh, after college, I went to uh, graduate school, the Yale Drama School. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was, our training was, yeah. you know, theater. And, and it was, uh, the, the goal was to have a life in the theater. Okay. Yeah. That was the primary focus and emphasis. And... Uh, for me, you know, it was a dream to have a job, you know, doing what I loved and what I was trained to do, um, and to actually even get paid a little for it was. Uh, sure. was f- Everyone asked, you know, over time, over the years, people have asked me, you know, like, so, you know, what was your? It was a big break, you know. Mm. It was was Wings the, mm-hmm. the, and it really wasn't really. What I considered my big break was being, a, you know. A working actor yeah. in a theater and having a steady gig, and um, it w- w- wasn't. We weren't getting rich, but we were certainly totally. challenged, and we were feeling sort of legitimate. Yeah, there's something about that that makes me feel like that's that's an actor with their head in the right place. If it's about making it, means uh, making, fame and fortune, making money. Yeah, it's yeah. not fame and fortune. That it's it, more like it's not the craft. I mean, it really is. It sounds trite, but it's sure. you know. It, it really is all about your you know your priority, your goals, and mm-hmm. and uh, if your goal, I guess, is to be to have notoriety and to have money or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, that's not going to be sustainable. It's right, right. You're you're doomed to a life of you know panic and and totally. insecurity. Yeah. But if you're yeah. if you're always sort of leaning toward you know, well, what is the work about? What is the, what's the next thing for me to, to try or to, mm-hmm. that focus will sustain you because it's a, it's separate and it's its own right. thing. Right. And it's sort of like you play the career game of um, hustling and of strategizing and of auditioning for the right things or trying to meet the right people in order to, that's the means to get to the end of working exactly. the craft. Yeah. And that's maybe first and foremost. There are some people who are really good at the careery, businessy stuff. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and I'm I don't understand those people. You know, like it's it's. I think the the craft being the driving focus is what makes sense to me. Because I agree, you're not going to get fulfilled if you're chasing something else in this career. And every rejection is going to be world ending. 
<laughs> you know? Yeah. If you're trying to just get out there to get out there. Yeah. Every everyone is a kind of a you know another cut of a knife, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> another ends. wound. That's um, the void. That's part of the void. The Emmy and Golden Globe winning Amazon original series The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel returns. Hailed as one of the best shows on the small screen of any genre by Deadline, this season takes Midge and Susie on a comedy tour filled with original music, sweeping dance numbers, award-winning costumes, and some of the most lush production design on TV. Watch the new season of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel December 6th, only on Amazon Prime Video. How did you get bit by the bug? Was it so early in your life that you don't remember? Uh, Well, I I don't know that it was actually just a bite. I think it was more of like um, more like an attack, a slow attack. Oh, of, uh-huh. An infestation. Of, of a, an infestation. <laughs> a slow, gradual <laughs> infestation. That's a good word. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah uh, you know, I, I guess it was just, you know, at a very young age, it just, it uh, it started as a sort of a fun ho- thing to do, a hobby. Mm-hmm. And then I mean, I never imagined that it was, you know, where I grew up in the small town in the Midwest, you know, wasn't, right. didn't seem like a viable. Like you said, you didn't have examples of people doing this. Well, I had an older sister who went off to, when she was 18, to to, uh, to go to acting school. And uh, that was kind of, I think she paved the way mm. uh, for me. Um, I don't know. It, 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 it was a kind of, um, I try to imagine what it was that. Mm. you know, really got under my skin. And then I gave up trying to figure it out. I just think maybe it was just something mm. that was hardwired. Sure. And I just sort of didn't, I didn't resist it hard enough. Sure. <laughs> if you know what I oh, mean. I love that. Yeah. It's your calling. And, and at some point it becomes viable to do it as a career, but you don't know exactly at what point that is that like, no. you're like, maybe I could do this for, maybe I can make money doing this. That's not necessarily an epiphany. I think what – yeah, what – one moment that I kind of remember, I was in college. Mm-hmm. Um, I was maybe a freshman in college at the University of Wisconsin because uh, I grew up in, in Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. And so I was going to the state school and um, I was, you know, I was tiptoeing around the theater classes and the acting classes mm-hmm. and not really, you know, with what I would call any kind of – strong commitment <laughs> and um, one t- day they had a, a performance a visiting troupe uh, doing a play at our school mm. and um, it was I think it was either the Guthrie or the Milwaukee rap I, I think it was the Guthrie mm-hmm. and uh, it was their company and uh, I'll never forget this it was a, kind of a, a, a large cast play it was it was the play every man so it was you know, maybe eight, ten people. And um, I went to see it as a student, and uh, I just, it just struck me. I, mm-hmm. I think, because I, I was not exposed to professional theater where sure. I grew up, mm-hmm. you know. And um, right. all of a sudden I thought, wow, these people are grown ups. Yeah. And they're, <laughs> they're doing this. They're doing this. Yeah. It's their job. Mm. And they're a company, and they're really good. Mm. And they're, the work was was the most extraordinary thing I had seen real live, cool. mm. and I thought, "Damn, this is this could be." I could see myself mm-hmm. uh, doing that, and it's they're they're having fun, right? Yeah. You can see that. And then there too. was a, there was like a you know a talk back afterwards, a Q and A, and uh. so we all sort of sat and stayed and and watched these guys sitting on the edge of the stage, talking to us about their process and their. Yeah, uh, pursuits, no and, longer and, in character, and there's yeah, that, and you're like, wow, these people are they're they're hip and they're mm. you know sophisticated and they're funny, and but they're serious. They're yeah. really they're not just dabbling. Right. They're they're in it. They're huh. invested. Yeah, and I think that was a kind of a a key moment for me. Sure, sure. To, to see that this was a viable to see you know in person. The viability of this this kind of yeah, life that it's that it's possible. This is maybe tricky, but do you do you talk to people who have have really given their all to acting and who aren't finding the success that they that whether success in how they measure it or how most people measure it? What do you advise people who are who are really struggling in this profession? 
Well, I I don't I try not to give you know uh, I, I I don't know anything, so I try not to give advice. <laughs> I, the, the advice I give is don't listen to me. Uh-huh. Um, I I think what I've seen what I've seen work for some people is is if they let go, you know, if they just mm. just sort of release it and mm. um, move off of it, you know, um, you know teach or or mm-hmm. you know find another way to give or another okay. way to offer their skill and their experience, and um, and oftentimes that then 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 once you sort of release into it um, and stop worrying it and fretting over it too much. Sure. Uh, some in some weird way it attracts it attracts work and uh, and also I just tell people you know it's it's uh, there's no point in doing this it's it, it, it's it's if you're not in it sort of for the long the long run I mean it's it's mm. a that thing about failure you have to accept that it's going to happen it has to yeah and uh, but but it it you know you see it happen to people that you know that are so good and so talented sure. and so it's just certain things just don't fall a certain way that's why i mean i i always you know i i always believe and remind myself you know this how fortunate i've been to have kind of in a way you know sort of been in the right place at the right time and yeah that that has to happen <laughs> so often that was excellent advice <laughs> i often find when people say oh, I don't tend to give advice or don't listen to me, they follow that with really great advice. <laughs> so thank you. Thanks. And just in general, I mean, on this podcast, of course, we're always we're always asking about, like, I mean, what is it that you, like, what's your favorite thing about it, about this? About doing the work, you mean? Yeah, uh, about acting. Is there one thing throughout the career that's, that you're always the most excited about? Or does it change to on the, depending on the project? I think for me, the the best part of it is, is that it's um, it the work changes as your life changes, mm-hmm. as your circumstances and as your you accumulate age and <laughs> experience and and loss. Yeah, and mm. uh, and and it it is uh, in a way, it's the kind of job that is it it's so intertwined with your life. You're not, you're not separated from it. It's you know some people do a job, their job is their job, and their life mm. is their life. And yeah. when and they leave their job at at the office or wherever, yeah, it's compartmentalized. Yeah, totally. And uh, this is different. This is uh, this is uh, completely uh, you know interlocked and and um, and and that and that's not necessarily always a good thing. Sometimes yeah. it's a weighs you down mm-hmm. and uh and then other times it it you know it's sort of your own uh circumstances or your own uh struggles your own uh the the, the conflicts of your in your life your your uh the confusion that you might be the, the anxiety that you might be mm-hmm. struggling with or whatever um or, or the loss for example you know gets implemented and, yeah. and infuses mm-hmm. the work and, and it becomes a launch pad. Are you consciously infusing or? Not necessarily consciously. Uh, sometimes Sometimes you are and sometimes it's just coming out of you. Yeah, wow. And it's, and, hmm. and, and interestingly enough, I've not, not 100% of the time, but, but a good, uh, you know, I would say like 75, 80% of the time, I choose or I'm, I'm presented with material that speaks to exactly where I am mm. uh, in my life, and so I think, wow, this is this is so this is just hitting me because I'm I'm already I'm already you know working or, or I'm, I'm I'm already struggling and spinning out with this problem, mm. and now this is the character's problem or the problem of the piece in general. Yeah, cool, and so. And, and and in a way, the work then becomes a kind of a therapeutic component. Yeah, hopefully. Um, yeah. And and one kind of informs the other. You go back to your life, having learned more about your problems. Yeah, or, or, or or sometimes you uh, sometimes it, it it it's not exactly the most uh, pleasant or mm. you know 
cathartic sort of experience. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes your the material is is so in line with your life that it that it's, there's a lot of pain involved, yeah. and there's a lot of like, Ugh, God, do I really want to? Do I really want to kind of unearth to go more there. of this? Um, yeah, because you dig down, you don't know what you're gonna what's gonna pop up. It can it can be challenging, and it can be. Uh, you be, can become sort of fragile and vulnerable in that sometimes right. in that state. Mm. So there's a there's a little bit of a risk involved there too. Yeah, I always feel like when I, uh, especially with theater, mostly with theater. Okay, when I do a play, there's a, there's it. I always feel like it, if it doesn't really cost you something mm. on a real sort of gut level, psychic level, maybe it's you know it, you you haven't really. You haven't really done it. You yeah. haven't really had the thing, the experience. Uh, it's it's got to – you have to sort of pay a price to mm. to get to or attain where where you need to be in that in that particular gotcha. job, in that the pursuit of that uh, – the solving of that, the problem of that play or the problem of that character mm-hmm. has to – has to uh, exact um, – you know, you get a little – it, there's got to be a bloodletting in a way. Yeah. Um, yeah, everything has a price. Yeah, not to say that you always have to suffer, suffer, suffer mm-hmm. and sort of, you know, flagellate yourself. That's not what it's sure. about. But it's – it's um, you have to give over – you have to get to a point where you're really sort of giving more than you mm-hmm. – uh, than you believe that you're capable of of giving. Cool. And you're saying we're, we're, we're a sick lot. We are absolutely because, <laughs> as you say, it shouldn't be flag- self-flagellation. But it's uh, if it's being therapeutic, then there's stuff that's got to be worked through. But you're saying it's the when it happens to be a, a piece or a character that feels relevant to your life, either consciously or your or your subconsciously, kind of being like this is connecting with me in some way, and I don't know exactly how. That that's harder than. You always got to pay the price. Maybe you, you have to pay. You, it, yeah, yeah. It, and, and I mean, I, again, I go to. It's not just. We're not just talking about acting. We're talking about a. Mm. It can be a, a another kind of creative pursuit, but hmm. it takes bravery. It takes a certain amount of courage and a certain amount of, um, you know, a willingness to kind of take a giant step mm. off a very steep cl- cliff. I, I, you know, really. Hmm. I mean. To, because you because you can fall far you can you know you can mm-hmm. you sometimes you can fail huge hugely yeah and uh, especially in live theater and that and you have to be okay with that mm-hmm. somehow you have to be like well yeah. hey you know this is gonna really set me back for about three years totally <laughs> this doesn't work <laughs> um, but is that also how you know you're there that you're doing it like I you don't said, think doing you can it. do that every time because <laughs> okay. it's just. It's just you know. Then you're going to wind up in the in the hospital. Or something. <laughs> but but every once in a while, yeah, you have to. I think you have to get there. You have to take that big a risk. Yeah, or or just be willing to. It's the willing to fail that's key. Mm-hmm. I I, I used to be so afraid of it, mm. but now I, I I've come to realize that it's just as I said. It's 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 really essential. Because you have fallen off the cliff. We've you have experienced oh, sure. failures. Yeah. Oh sure, yeah. yeah. And, but you know, and then I have, and 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 I'm still here. I'm not, you know. Yeah. I thought, you know, when you're on the other side of it, the the front side of it, you think, well, this could be the end of me. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't really ever. Isn't What's really the worst case scenario? Yeah. Yeah. What's the worst case scenario? You you get a bad review, sure. or you or the show. Uh, Closes, mm-hmm. or you, you know, you don't lose some income, or, yeah, or, yeah. or you burn a, you, you, you know, you don't get hired by that producer or that director sure, again, sure, sure, or, sure. <laughs> but uh, it'll all work out. Generally, that's yeah. you know, again, you're 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 in the long, you got to play the long game. Yeah, yeah, you got to navigate that void for sure. <laughs> there is only the void, the, <laughs> and, and little. Little intermittent periods where you're where you step out of it. Yeah, but you can also use so the utilizing too is obviously so, so tricky. But the, you can use the void 
anxiety over not having a job can be applied to a character that has anxiety, for example. Absolutely. Yeah. It's all usable. The void is where all the good stuff happens. I'm <laughs> telling you. There it is. That's it. That's what it is. Um, this is awesome. Thank you. <laughs> this is really, really awesome. I, want, I did want to ask... I had a couple of things that are that are very specific to you because I think your accent work is is probably one of the best in the business. Really? And I want to know how you Thank yes, you. I want to know how you got there because you have such a um, you were an Italian and then you you did the band's visit and then you have you even have Abe who's got his own clipped mm-hmm. vocal situation. Mm-hmm. You know, do you where, where was the training? Is that all from training, 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 or? Um. Well, there was a lot of training. Uh, uh, we did a lot of dialect work at at school, uh, but also I think it just you know part of it is that just the ear that I because I mm. grew up in a an ethnic you know kind of family, yeah, and um, heard accents you know all my life. I mean, not just heard them, but lived with them, and um, you know aunts and uh, grandparents, and you know it was it was just fun to play with those yeah. kinds of. Accents, and, like you said, uh, it's play at first. It's just yeah, yeah, cool. and uh, and I guess it's just, and then I I just feel like when I was in school and we started to do dialect work, I just I, I just loved it. I just felt like it was a real um, sort of like music for me. Okay, yeah, and, and uh, I'm not a musician, <laughs> and you know, but but it's kind of like. When you hear a great song and you want to have that song, you learn that song, you have it in your head. Mm. It, that's kind of how I see these, you know, accent work. And it, uh, I find it helps me to get in touch with the character and internalize things the way I have to work my brain and my mouth. And mm. um, often, uh, an accent is not just making sounds, but it's changing rhythms and it's, uh, uh, cool. you know, it's how you breathe and how you ex- express and mm-hmm. uh, and how you conceal and 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 re- you know and and don't express Ooh. certain things. And that helps me. Um, you know, you do a certain amount of work uh, that's. You know, as they say, you know, from the inside out, and then there's a this for accent. For me, say. it's that it's outside in. Yeah. So you, you have these two kind of converging. You've kind of done both. Process. Well, sometimes you do them at the same within the same mm-hmm. part. Okay. You know, there's a certain amount of. Or as my friend uh, uh, worked with uh, Alfred Molina, who's a fantastic mm-hmm. man, and a terrific actor. His his thing is that he it was he always says he likes to work from the outside out. Oh, I love that. It's just, it's oh, that's it's, interesting. It's funny, that, but it's that's what speaks to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, accents are are. I guess I've I've made a, a kind of, uh, I've, I've made my peace with that. Um, uh huh. That's great. Um, thank you for that. Do you have any last minute uh, advice for actors? You've really covered a lot. This is really really good stuff. <laughs> We're gonna excerpt I've had a lot that. Of coffee. <laughs> we're gonna excerpt that <laughs> part about you were praising backstage. We're gonna excerpt the part about accents. We're gonna excerpt all of this. We're gonna reuse it. It's gonna be great. <laughs> oh, that's good. Thanks. So good. You could write a textbook. I do. <laughs> hey, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, you should write a actor self help book or something. What What not to do as, a, as yeah. an actor? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll just say one more thing. Mm-hmm. As much as I, as much as I, you know, like talking. About it, it's it's very hard to talk about. It's mm. it's and it's almost a little bit dangerous to talk about. It's because mm. <laughs> you know language, it it has a tendency to sort of lock things and or or, yeah. or define things. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of this stuff is un, it's just not definable. Yeah, yeah. It's it it doesn't want to be overly examined or. Yeah overly defined totally. because it's a fluid thing. Yeah. It's um and it's a subjective, super yeah. subjective. It's like poetry. It's not uh it isn't clear cut. Mechan- it's not auto mechanics. It's right. it's something that's much more um hmm. it it needs to be much more uh sort of discoverable in the moment. Yeah, felt rather than uh named. 
mm-hmm. reduced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Language can reduce yes. it and and confine it. It's just sometimes. Yeah. And uh, I don't I don't want to do that. I don't want to. Um, by saying, for example, people ask sometimes, like, "What is your process?" I was like, "Well, mm-hmm. I, I don't have a process, really, frankly. I don't think I do. But, but even if I did, if I talked about it, then it would be that. That's what it would be. Mm. And you're locked in. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't think I want that. I, I, I don't want to. I, I frankly don't even want to know what it is. I. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid. I'm afraid of knowing what it is. If you actually say it out loud, then it becomes the thing, and then you know then what it, it is. But once, once, <laughs> once you talk about it as one thing, then it can't be fourteen other things. Yeah, we want it to be fourteen other things. I want it to be fourteen hundred other things. Yeah, yeah. Cool. That's all I got. <laughs> it's actually really a perfect way to end a podcast interview about talking about acting. I think that it's just true that like listeners can take whatever they like from this, and they can think about it in a way that makes sense to them. I hope so. Yeah. You gave great advice. This is great. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. In the Envelope, an awards podcast, is recorded at Lotus Productions and Hyperbolic Audio in New York City and Soundbox LA, Mark Rose Studios, and Buzzies in Los Angeles. Thanks, as always, to podcast producer extraordinaire Jamie Muffet and to the team at Backstage, Samantha Sherlock, Mark Stinson, Caitlin Watkins, and, of course, Casey Howe. Visit Backstage.com, and don't forget, you can subscribe to Backstage by using the code ENVELOPE at checkout for a free trial. That's right, 100% free. For more exclusive content, join us on Facebook and Twitter at In the Envelope, and subscribe, share, and leave a comment. Who would you like us to interview next? Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time for another glimpse in the envelope.